Hello fellow survivors, how are you guys doing today here on the bunker? <laughs> I don't know how bad things are gonna be like two weeks from now, so I'm just anticipating really. Um, hello everyone, hi, uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, we're here, uh, about to watch Doctor Who, and uh, shit got really real in the past week in terms of uh, the world around us. Uh, I mean, it's been getting real for a couple months now, but now it's, now it's, now everyone's feeling it. Now everyone's feeling it. Um, oh yeah, this is gonna be really weird to watch in the hypothetical future where everything's fine. But, uh, I'm recording this in the middle of the COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak. Um, it's pretty bad. So my entire province is on lockdown. Nobody can get out, so that's cool. Uh, <laughs> But that doesn't matter anymore. We're we're doesn't matter. We're here to watch Doctor Who. That's what matters. That's what matters right now. So we're about to watch Doctor Who and uh okay. So never mind the virus shit. Let's focus on the good shit, which is Spyfall. Okay, so uh oh yeah, this is not like my name is Matt. I need to do that intro. <laughs> I forget. It, it's it's weird. This this is like last couple of days have been really weird. Also, I've been having issues uploading videos in general. I don't know who to blame if my incompetent ISP, the COVID-19 lockdown, or both. I'm just going to go ahead and point at both. Uh, but um, if you see any late uploads or whatever, then it's because of that. Anyway, we're here about to watch Doctor Who Spyfall. Part 2. So, last time on Doctor Who, we watched Spyfall Part 1, and it was the series premiere for Series 12, and uh, a lot of people have been excited for it, I think. For the last, like, two or three episodes, people have been commenting, like, yo, yo, I can't wait for Series 12, though, and I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I can't wait to, for Series 12 to, to begin. Episode 1 is gonna be really good, and I'm like, yeah, it was. Uh, so, um, what happened in the last episode? Uh, so, we met... We met O, and uh, then it turns out that O, oh, shit, that's the master. Uh, so that that was revealed to us at the very end of the last episode. Um, so it was fun to have a character tag along with us for the entire episode, and he was like an ally. Only for that at the end to be revealed that that is actually your arch enemy, you know? And he was also the evil mastermind behind everything that was going on, so it's like, that was pretty fun. Uh, but... I, I talk about it, uh, how I feel about uh, the Sacha. Is that his name? Sacha the One? Sacha Master on the previous video. But uh, the short version is that I think it reminds me a lot of the John Sim Master, but better. Because I think he's even more, even more crazy and childlike than the previous one was. And uh, I think he also fits a lot better in this uh, in this version of the show that he did in the RTD era. Because the RTD era was, like, goofier, and this version is more grounded. And having a crazy, stupid, goofy-ass character in a grounded show creates a better clash. And, um, and just a more interesting dynamic. That's how I feel about him. But that's just... That's just me talking about the three minutes that we get to see him. Um, but something else I wanna I wanna say is that I this is something I I remember hours after I finished recording previous episode, and it's uh, it's the fact that the master does say to the doctor like, um, what does he exactly say? I'm just gonna paraphrase here, but he says something like, "Moments before you die, I'm gonna tell you everything you." have ever known or every er, everything that you think you know is a lie something like that I'm, I'm 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 skimming through the previous episode now everything that you think you know is a lie okay so that's what that is okay so that's uh that that is a sentence with a lot of possible implications because there is a lot that the doctor knows and there's a lot that we all know uh, we've been doing this shit for over 700 episodes, so that is a lot. <laughs> so, um, that sentence can have a lot of uh, implications, ramifications, and it's clearly the the setup for whatever the season's gonna be doing, I assume. Um, 
speaking of, the in the previous season we did have a setup on episode two, I think. And then we never came back to it. So it might be a, it might be set up for the whole era instead of a single season. Uh we don't know. But I need to point that line out because I feel like it's important. But there's not much I can say about it. I really there's not much I can say. That is just like we throw that in there in order for you to make sure that there is some stuff we're gonna be doing. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll get there at some point. Uh so yeah, that happened. Uh I feel like I needed to point it out because I didn't previous episode and that was bad. So um what else in terms of the plot of the episode we had fucking the head of google not google but google uh be seven percent not human and he was also in cahoots with aliens doing some shit <laughs> and uh and they were as uh, spies from all around the world for different agencies were being assassinated by some alien bullshit and uh, at the end of this episode, it's revealed that uh, it was the master, the one that was behind everything. And um, and at the end of the episode, we, we finish with a pretty good cliffhanger. It's one of the worst cliffhangers I can think about. Because it's like, we're in a plane in mid-flight. The master's here. The master wanted us in this plane. He got rid of the guy that we were chasing, so he's no longer in the plane. Instead, there is a bomb in the plane. The bomb went off. The plane is open. The cockpit is gone. So even even if the plane was open, I guess it, if the cockpit was there, you could like pilot it in such a way that you could do like some kind of emergency landing, and maybe try to 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 salvage it a little bit. But um, the cockpit's gone, so that's bad. Um, and then the master teleports away, and the doctor teleports away, so the doctor can't even be there in order to do anything. And then Graham, Ryan, and Yas are just left to this, in this empty, destroyed plane in mid-flight. And then the doctor gets teleported to this, like, weird alien forest or some bullshit that we saw earlier in the episode with Yas, and then she was like, no, and I'm just like, do you know what this is? And I, I assume she knows because of her reaction, but I don't know. I, I really don't know anything. So, um, yeah, that that's that's where we left off. So that was fun. Um, I guess we'll we'll just have to see this episode of what we're doing. So, yeah, uh, Doctor Who series twelve episode two. Let's go. What did the master set this up? Uh, what? Hello. No way. Uh, uh, hey, hey, I've got what? Maybe the doctor did this because we keep cutting between one and the other. Please be assured, all this will pass. Okay, the doctor set this up. How? I mean, just a time machine. Never mind. Haven't got long. The bomb in the cockpit knocked out the signals from the computer to the engines. Okay. But the computers in this aircraft aren't in the cockpit. They're under the cabin floor. Ryan, the app should have opened. What? Hey? How is this installed on my phone? Use it to communicate with the engines via the aircraft wiring. Pay attention. Do okay. This fast. I'm worried you might lose me. If God fucking damn it! I am Ada. What do you think this realm is, Ada? I believe it to be my mind. How are we here? Though I have not met another here before. I'm the doctor and I'm very real. But you've been here before. But many times. When the paralysis subsides, I find myself fully back in my body. <laughs> You again. Offer you my hand. We may leave this place together. I don't think that will work. How will you know if you do not try? Decide, Doctor. Right, the house was a daughter's. I was afraid. She did not have a clue. This better work. 
I don't appreciate last minute changes of plan as I'm about to take off. Get the fuck out, man. No chaos is a wonderful thing. Allow me to swat those flies. They can't have survived. You told me everything was foolproof. What? How has she got there? What's Worst happened? thing. Nothing I can't deal with. You saw our friends. I'll deal with the doctor. Where are you, Doc? Oh. Getting 19th century. Nations shall cower in fear as my steam gun fires 1,000 bearings per minute. A perfect modern defense. A grenade for the home. Intruders repelled with force. Oh, it works. Your apparition just now was impossible. How did you do it? The marvelous apparating man. Lady. Apparating lady. Right. Every time. 1834. Okay. Yes. Sure. Um, in the 19th century. What do we do? Hold on in there, Sam. Figure out what Batten and Noah plan in. That's what the doctor would do. Yeah. She I like that they call him Mo because they don't know he's a master. Yes, yeah, just gotta believe him. You didn't see that place. Hey, still got access to Barton's diary. He's giving a keynote speech in London tomorrow night. So let's get moving. I like that they're still doing shit. Like the doctor's not here, but they have the initiative to keep going. Those creatures you think are your guardians. They're in alliance with a renegade from my home planet and a 21st century tech inventor. Ladies and gentlemen, see the incredible shrinking device. Oh my god, no. To be smaller ladies. You can Alright then. Happy couple. Said go. Do not move. <sighs> wow, he's so pissed. Let them go. You can help me. I like this confrontation right away. Did you just move? Did you move? <laughs> He's gonna shrink them anyway. <laughs> My mistake. Neil. Or they all die. When I arrange for your death, I expect you to stay dead. How did you escape? How did you end up here? You don't know. You don't know? Yeah. She just told her a lot of things. I bet you don't even know what they are. <laughs> I call the Kasavin, and we have interests in common. You, Barton, and a race you barely know. That's one uneasy alliance. I know, right? Down, Doctor! The smoke gun! For use by a young lady. Nothing is, and yet I find myself more than capable. I like that. Good shit. Ada, I really do not approve. Don't have a TARDIS. The grenade? <laughs> do you have an Ada? Let's go, Ada. Hello, friends. Or should I say, plain thieves? What? Do you think I wouldn't be able to track you? We have your well numbers, done. emails, GPS. I even know how many more stamps you need for a free coffee. Your passports have been revoked. Your bank cards are frozen. We have a record of everyone you know, friends, mm. family, colleagues. That's bad. Everyone you ever followed on social media. Of course, we have cameras everywhere, and now you're wanted for hijacking. Go on. Go off grid. See how long you last. Oh. Yasmin Khan is phoning her mum. You done off? Go on. Yes? Hello. It's me. Listen, don't listen to anything you hear. Fire him! Did you not hear him? We have to go, Doc. Mm. Mom? Cannot explain any of what I've seen today. Babbage. Doctor Ken. Charles Babbage. Okay, is this a historical yes. figure? So this must be My the difference, difference engine. Charles Babbage, mathematician, mechanical engineer. Okay, gotcha. Not just any old Ada. Your Ada Lovelace, daughter of Lord Byron and Annabella Milbank, one of the great minds. Okay. I am Ada Gordon, madam. Eighteen thirty-four. Of course you are. Well, maybe one day, who knows, you might meet a nice Earl. This changes everything. <laughs> this isn't an accident. Ada Lovelace in Babbage's house. You're clues. You're important. How did you come by this? It was a gift delivered by a young man who said it was a token of appreciation from his master. 
They suited you in their dimension, which means they can't be in this dimension for long. But maybe they gain an ally. Mr. Google. Mastermind, who builds them a machine which stabilizes them in this world. Okay. Long enough for them to send spies and to spread their work and start a plan. Because I've seen the map in his hut. Multiple Earths. Except not. Not multiple Earths. Multiple time periods. Okay. My Sonic on the Silver Lady and might be able to force this creature to throw me back to the 21st century. I hope if this is your plan, it is fraught with risk. Where there's risk, yeah. there's hope. I like that. Every plan we have is like this deep breath. Like, okay, yeah, it is coming with us. What if the doctor doesn't come back? She what did save us on the plane, so. We keep going. Stop farting. Get rid of those creatures wherever they are. Ryan's right. We carry on doing what the doc would want us to do. Sorry, did you just say Ryan's right? Yes, I did. Enjoy the moment, son. You won't <laughs> hear it often. The doctor knew him. How come she could have recognized him? He said that he knew the doc when she was a man. And that first night we met... They're figuring out the master. She told me and Grace that she'd been through um, something called... Regeneration. Regeneration. Like a whole body had changed. And we will ask when okay. we see her again. Good. I Which like that. Will. I like having the conversation. She is safe somewhere, of course, right? She did save us with with the with the TV on the plane, so we know that she she just didn't just disappear and die. I did keep a couple of those spy gadget things. Yeah. 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 Do you have the fucking laser shoe? You the laser shoes. I'm not that big. Why do you use Let's them on the fucking plane? go. What? In a confined space like that, you're having a laugh, ain't you? That wouldn't have been very smart, would it? And besides which, I forgot to read the instructions. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is good. This is good dialogue. Conflicts. Good. To be fair, I didn't read the instructions on those either. We didn't read anything. We just, we just started wearing them. We got a couple of donuts. Donut. Oh my god. But, there's no one I'd rather be on the run with. I like that. I like that scene a lot. They really look like Cybermen, man. They really look like Doomsday Cybermen. Are we in a different time period now? Are we in World War One slash Two? Paris, nineteen forty-three. World War Two. Fuck. Inside, quick. We're not safe out here. How can we understand them if the TARDIS? Is th Maybe the Master TARDIS is translating. Is that the fucking Master? I bet anything that's the Master. This piece of shit. It's true! Do something! I can't believe that worked. Don't do that! They're gonna shoot them! <laughs> Just run in place! Oh my god. It's so fucking dumb. I, it's, it's so good. It's at the gateway, I expect. Back to the 19th century. Does she realize that I'm one of the most successful men on the planet? Who I've gives a shit about the world? That? Not for the better, my you. What do I have to do to get you to say, well done? Is this what they said, mommy issues? Alright. Look at this evil ass motherfucker. Look at the way he smiles. Okay. Yes. We know both of them are okay though, because one is a doctor, the other one is a historical figure that needs to survive, so... You are a lifesaver. Oh, got some interesting stuff under the floorboards here. Ah, wireless radio equipment. As issued by the British Special Operations Executive. Are you also... Very large and very difficult Are you also a historical figure? You're not Parisian. You're a British spy. I know that okay. place. Codename Madeline. Real name, nor Anaya Khan. First female wireless operator oh to be dropped fucking behind God. enemy lines. This is really good. This is really good. How do you know so much about me? And why are you both wearing such strange clothes? That soldier's voice. He was in the Adelaide gallery. How can he be here? 
He's in league with the Kasafan. Those creatures of light. I'd hoped to get back to their home dimension where we met, and then to the 21st century. But we ended up here instead, which is, you know, 19th century to 20th. It's progress. Yeah. Little small jumps. I've always wanted to return to Paris. And now you see this. It's not at its best. Nightly It'll be better. Days. Well, not right now. They promised us war at this scale would never happen again. And yet, here we are. This isn't the first time. This is the future. A world on fire. There are better are futures. The dark times, but they don't sustain. Darkness never sustains. Hope prevails. What equipment do you have here? Only my radio equipment. No gun. No cyanide pill. I'm a pacifist. Snap! Strong position to take during wartime. <laughs> Two pacifists and a 19th century descendant of Byron against the Nazis in Paris and an alien invasion across multiple dimensions. That's a big to-do list. Hello? Do you think they would have wired every person you know? I mean, they were already there, you know? Do it in seconds. There's a part of the plan, isn't it? The shoelacer. This is the most advanced laser shoe known to man. This is the stupidest shit ever, and I love it. Guns down and on the floor. Don't make me do the old soft shoe shuffle. Did he intimidate them? We're taking your phones and we're gonna raid your GPS. How's that for smart? <laughs> Ryan, don't tell him the plan. Oh my god, it's, this episode is so fucking good. He intimidate them into... He neutralized them by intimidation with laser shoe. This is some good ass shit. This is a, it's a fucking fantastic episode. Okay, Morse code. I wasn't listening. Is it do 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 It's like this bitch is taunting me. I'll meet you. No troops. No soldiers. Just us. Oh. Let's fucking go. The Arthur has a plan. I assume the plan involves taking his starters away. Can we talk about what happened to you? I don't like what you're wearing. All the company you keep. How have you managed that? You're not exactly their Aryan archetype. Tiny teutonic psychic perception filter. Makes sense. Learned it at school. Let's people see what they want to see. Earth's intelligence services starting to realize their presence. So what? You brought the Kasavan to Earth? Oh. They were already here. Sleeper agents everywhere, waiting to be activated, amassing information in case they need to attack. I can't help myself. You can't. I have to stick my oar in. Where's Barton? This is where his guys were supposed to lead us, and he's not here. Well done at overpowering my people. But did you really think they wouldn't tell me? I'd build things. I'd test them. So, I let them test a tiny part of me. And now it's time for the global rollout. It's gonna turn everyone. Why are we trusting her? I have seen extraordinary things with her. In like 20 minutes, I've already She's seen enough. And unafraid. And I believe in her. Is that charisma? Shouldn't she have left us with? Cell phone. I don't know. I've never seen anything like that before. I like that people are looking at her because she's wearing weird clothes. Quick dial. Oh. Must change the ringtone. Since it's a voicemail. Probably just asking if I've had an accident in the last five years. They hate it when you give them a list though, don't they? They don't have my vision. What vision is that? Chaos. Carnage. Whew. I don't understand. No, I, I know you don't. <laughs> when does all this stop for you? The games. When the betrayals. Dies. The killing. Why would it stop? I mean, how else would I get your attention? Are you? Do you have mom issues too? I took a trip home. To Gallifrey. Hiding in its little bubble universe. Not sure how to describe what I found. Pulverized, burned, nuked, all of the above. Okay. Someone destroyed it. Our 
face to the ground. You should really take a look. Oh, wait. You, you won't be able to. I just thought I'd let you know before I... Can you hear voices? I'm one of Blighty's bravest radio operators. Very good at sending messages, particularly fake ones. Designed to be intercepted. Now, finish what you were saying. What have you done? Sent a message to the Brits, telling them how valuable you've been as a double agent. Sending Nazi <laughs> information to the British. <laughs> Top perception filter. Very easy to jam. Now they'll see the real you. Good luck. And you're gone. This being a misunderstanding. Can we talk about this? You've always struck me as such reasonable people. Oh my god. That was good shit. Now she's gonna see all the starters, I assume. And then she's gonna come back that way. Do we find the TARDIS? That's what you meant. That wasn't here last week. I bet it wasn't. So arrogant. Didn't even change the appearance. It's just the house. This is my way back to finding my friends and saving humanity. I know you think I'm mad, but give me five minutes and you'll think I'm the sanest person alive. Okay, that was an overstatement. <laughs> Kasavin, technology, DNA. How are they all connected? Human DNA, that's what they were testing. How much of that did you understand? We gave you pieces of plastic and circuitry and games. And you handed us, me, my company, total access to your lives. So thank you. For carrying our cameras in your pockets. <laughs> That's like the most. For putting our microphones in your bedrooms. For signing up your kids. Handing them our devices. We told you, of course your lives are private. Of course your data's safe. And you believed us. <laughs> you kept clicking agree. This is the most. Now, read it. Humanity is over. You have three minutes to prepare. Okay. Not a joke. We are way past peak human. <laughs> We're the perfect storage system. Which means there are over 7 billion potentially incredibly useful hard drives on this planet. People wouldn't have this reaction watching this. This is like the most evil shit anyone has ever said ever. And the fact that this is the fucking CEO of Google saying it and saying it live in front of everyone and everyone's just like... Okay, we need to revert this. Somehow the doctor's gonna revert this. Move away. Master? No! I've just had the most infuriating 77 years of my life. <laughs> Have you any idea how hard it is to live through the 20th century? As Jack. Transmitting Kasavin energy around the world all at once into every device, hitting every human being and erasing all their DNA. Simultaneously. Doctor? Stop. Don't do this. Now we're Gucci. Nothing happened. It was just a light show. Extraction team, I need to get out. Doctor, what did you do? Oh, I like this music. Sorry. I think that might have been me. Me and my wonderful colleagues. Conspiracy. <laughs> He was right. Built a fail safe into that machine. Planted a virus. That would if just it stop the whatever it was doing. Of a army within its systems. Total shutdown. I've rigged the silver lady to exile you back to your own dimension. This planet's off limits. Oh, and you know that deal he made with you? Barton and those creatures do the dirty work, and once they're done, I get rid of them, having destroyed your precious human race in the process. Win, win, win. You're done. What's your name? Don't wear it out. That's the trouble with modern technology. You never know when you're being spied upon. <laughs> They're gone. That was really fucking good. Alright, now you're gonna be imprisoning him for another whatever amount of years. Maybe eternity. That's some good shit. You have a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, a little bit. Like what? <laughs> they helped me out. I'm dropping them back in a sec. How did you manage to save our lives on a plane? Fine. I gotta go and do that. I have a time machine. Come on! <laughs> she, she's, she's the signing. She's the signing. Answer me one question. 
the fascists. Do they win? Never. Not while there's people like you. It's all right. I'm just removing me from your mind. I like this so much. Doctor, does this have to be the end? All the things I've learned, the advances, the machines, I would dearly love to see more. I'm afraid I need to do something about that. Because I want that knowledge. But don't take it away. Please don't take it away. A little bit of it would remain. You don't need a preview. You'll figure it out before anyone. First to see the potential in things like that. To work out what could be. What they can really do. Computers start with you. Sweet dreams, Ada Lovelace. All right, it's gone again. I mean, the last time that we were here, it kind of did mess a lot of things up, so... Fuck you. When I said someone did that... It was you? Obviously, I meant... I did. Of course. I had to make them pay for what I discovered. They lied to us. Founding fathers of Gallifrey. Everything we were told was a lie. Okay. You're not who we think. You or I. The whole existence of our species built on the lie of the timeless child. So it is connected. Yeah, 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 I remember this. Yeah. But wait, what did we just see? What did we just see? It's, it's buried deep in all our memories. I'll tell you more. But why would I make it easy for you? I know, right? It wasn't for me. Okay. Five, five planets, you barely said a word. I'm fine. You're not. Why don't you ever share anything with us? I share stuff. We need to talk. I would like to see this conversation happen, but I don't know if it will. Who are you, Doc? I mean, really? What do you do? Okay. I was born on a planet called Gallifrey. I'm a Time Lord. A lady now, I guess. I can regenerate my body. When I'm done. I stole this TARDIS and I ran away. I've been traveling ever since. The Master was one of my oldest friends. An enemy. We went very different ways. Yeah, there's a lot still. Visit. You're home. <sighs> Not right now. Another time. That's it. Boy, a lot happened in that episode, ain't it? Oh boy, okay, so that was Spyfall Part 2. Um, I guess that was just Spyfall in general. Uh, okay, so... What do we even focus on? There's a lot. There's a lot. So... Okay. Uh, let's, let's immediately tackle into the, into the big thing. Is that, uh, the Master said the Gallifrey is destroyed. Again. Sure. Uh, sure. That is one of those things that it's like, I, I don't even know if it's kind of a big deal anymore. Because, like, Gallifrey, first of all, we didn't care about it in Classic. Then we did, once we started uncovering more about Time Lords and whatever. And then they became a constant. And then... Yeah, and then we... Okay, so, okay, no, 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 they were a constant all the way through. Then, when we get to Eccleston era, it's like, oh, it's gone. They're all dead, I'm the last one. And that carried over all the way to Matt Smith. When we finally saved it in Day of the Doctor, so it was like, yo, that's cool. But then we... <laughs> uh, then... We never came back to it until Hell Bent, where we just didn't didn't have a, a a so okay. This is a pro. This is a problem that some people had with Hell Bent. It's the fact that uh, the Gallifrey storyline got sidelined because of for for the sake of the Clara storyline, and and some people might have been upset by that. I remember hearing people say that they wanted to hear more. They wanted to see more about Gallifrey and the Time Lords than about Clara. 
So a lot of people didn't like Hellbent because of it. But that was the only interaction we got with Gallifrey uh, after we saved it. And to be fair, it was it was a pretty cool couple of scenes where uh, during the first like third of Hellbent or half, where you know like they they're tracking the doctor down and the doctor like doesn't give a shit and like fucking Rassilon is just like who the fuck does he think he is and everyone just goes. It's the man who won the Time War, sir. <laughs> it's like... And he was such a badass in that. And a lot of it was, was fantastic in Hellbent because of it. You know, he was a war hero. Everybody loved him. Like, he, he was always the crazy renegade. And then he became the person who saved us, you know? So, but he still didn't want any... Didn't want to be in there. He didn't want any recognition. He kind of doesn't give a shit. But he just didn't want any of you to die. He saved you all. So everyone just is just like, that guy is all right. He's a really cool guy. We never see him anymore. He doesn't want to be here. But he saved us and we, we love him for it. You know, that kind of deal. We got a little bit of it. And now the next time we see Gallifrey, it's gone again. It's completely fucked, destroyed. Everyone's dead again. Uh... <laughs> It's difficult to say whether or not we care about Gallifrey anymore. Because we we didn't care because we didn't know about it. Then we did a little bit and then it became a constant and I guess we did. And then we didn't care because by the time he came back it was gone. And it was just raw with the idea that he was just gone. And then we saved it and it was all, oh yeah, awesome, we saved it. And then the next time we were there we kind of didn't care. And then the next time we're here it's gone. So it's like, I don't, I don't fucking know, man. It sucks that all those people died. Okay, so, okay. Uh, so, the last of the Time Lords thing isn't even, isn't even a thing anymore. Because, like, the Master is still around. I mean, it's trapped in, like, a separate, or whatever, but he's still around. We, we know he's going to come back at some point, maybe. Um, but then also the fact that, like... <sighs> the Master said that he just destroyed the planet. He just burned everything to the ground. He raised, nuked it, and, and just, like, kill everyone. Doesn't necessarily mean that the whole civilization was wiped out. There could be, like, one Gallifreyan that survived or something, you know? That there could be some Time Lords still hanging out that survive. You know, it's just like the Master just threw a fit and blew everything up. So, I don't think it's as much the last of the Time Lords storyline again. It, it, as is, it's more of, of the, a thing of like, oh, Gallifrey is just fucked again. And I guess there's no one we know that survived. But someone's gonna come back and we're gonna bring it back at some point in the future. And it's not going to be that big of a reveal anymore. Because I, I don't think that you... Because the, I, I don't think they're going to drill so hard the last of the Time Lords bit again. They're just going to say like, Oh yeah, the Master fucked the planet. But then a couple, like a season later we're going to see like... Yo, I survived that one time. And now civilization came back to life. And it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> like I'm expecting that to happen. Uh, but Doctor Who doesn't necessarily need Gallifrey. And like... Because, like, again, the Doctor Who classic didn't really have Gallifrey up until, like, the second Doctor did it. Like, it wasn't a thing of, like... Yeah, like, it, it just wasn't mentioned. When was Gallifrey first mentioned? I mean, I think it was during the second Doctor's run, but is it in the War Games? Was it in the War Games? Okay, so I'm going to enter the article for the War Games and alt have Gallifrey and see what they have to say. No, never mind. So it's not. So never mind that. Um, but like the second Doctor, I believe, is the first one that, uh, in, that during his run was the first time that we as the audience found out about Gallifrey and Time Lords and all that nonsense. Um, or was it the third Doctor? I think during the second Doctor, it was, like, unnamed. And then in, in during the third Doctor run it, run, it started to become more of a more of a solidified thing. I don't know. 
thing is it became a solidified thing and it carried on all the way to the seventh doctor um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um then in the movie they mention oh yeah uh they didn't mention other friend in the movie. I guess whatever. The point is that then he came back, but the thing is that we had like several seasons of the show in classic where we just didn't give a shit about Gallifrey. We didn't know of its existence, and then and I, I read about this. It's the fact that um, one of the things that some people complain about Doctor Who as it kept going, and I'm talking about the classic series, is the fact that um, some of the mystery was gone. Um, because the more we learn about the Doctor, the more we learn about the background, the more we learn about the Time Lords and the Gallifreys, um, some of the, some of the mystique goes away. And, uh, people like the mystique, you know? The name of the show is Doctor Who, you know? So, the more we learn about that, uh, the... Some people complain that it was a bad thing to do, down the line. So, for season 25 of Classic Doctor Who, and I read this, I read about this the other day because I was, I, I watched Greatest Show in the Galaxy. It should have aired right now, I think. I'm literally uploading that video as I'm talking about this, so it should have aired like a week ago, maybe more. But, season 25 of Doctor Who, the writers started talking about some of the mystique is gone. What we need to focus on is bringing some of that back. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up some kind of storyline through through quick mentions that the Doctor might have, might be an even greater being that we know him to be, which was a ballsy move. And they never really, they never really executed on that so hard because this show was canceled in 26. Um, but moving forward to the Eccleston era, we know, like, we, Gallifrey is no longer a player, and the Time Lords are no longer players, and I think that proved to be a really good thing, because I think the less we dwell into some Gallifrey bullshit political drama, the best it is for the the way the show works, because the fundamentally the way the show works, and I'm going on a super whatever the fuck tangent by the way, I'm gone. But the way the show works is every episode we just get a new setting, we get a new adventure, there is some kind of conflict, we gotta have fun with it, and we're gonna try and solve it, and then we're gonna move on to the next one. That's how the formula of the show works. That's kind of why I really like it because I really love the episodic nature of the show. And that's not to say that I, I just, I love it because it is episode to episode, but because like we have two parters and I generally prefer two parters than one parters, but I do like the concept of we get a story, we get a setting, we get a conflict, we go into it, we figure it out, we fix it, we move on. I like that so much. I like that so, so much. Um, and I think that the more we stick to that base formula without any additions on top of it, which is Gallifrey bullshit, the better it will be. Down the line, the better it will be. There can be some really good storylines you can have with Gallifrey and the Time Lords, but I think the more we stray away from that normally and we just focus on our episodic adventures and against the better it will be so the fact that Gallifrey is gone right now it sucks that it's gone because it's like oh man my whole planet is dead again that sucks but from a point of telling the story um I don't know if it's gonna matter too much because I I'm ex I'm fully expecting like a season from now, they're gonna be like, Gallifrey survived somehow. A group of people survived and repopulated the planet, and it's not what it used to be, but it's still really good. Or we're just not gonna do that. We're just not gonna do it at all. That could be a thing. <laughs> that could be a thing because like things in Doctor Who are canon until they stop being canon. 
<laughs> so they can just completely sandbag that and just say like Alfred's gone it is back again here and they're not gonna address how <laughs> they did that with Scar didn't they because the Sand Doctor blew up Scarrow <laughs> and uh I think Scar showed up in the movie like right away he was like <laughs> why why is it there I think they addressed it in Magician's Apprentice actually or, or not Magician's Apprentice I think it was uh which is familiar. So I guess they addressed it in that. They We revealed the planet. Fuck it. You know? But like. It took so long. For you to do that. It took so long. It, the same way Daleks always came back. After they were wiped out. Supposedly in the time war. And they just kept showing up once a season. And it's like. Yep. There we go. So. Um. <laughs> I, I. I. Yeah. I, I am fully expecting Alfred to be back. For the time being, it sucks, but I, yeah, and the doctor might have some moments where she's going to be like, oh man, I miss my planet, I'm fucked, they're all dead, that sucks, but I don't think they're going to go too hard on it, because it will be the last of the timelines, but again, and we already went that through that, man, we already went through that with Eccleston, we already went through that with Tennant, and, um, then Matt Smith kind of stopped giving a shit, and then we saved it. So then it's like, all right, we're, we're done. We moved on from that. We don't need to do it again. So I went on a huge Gallifrey Time Lord tangent. Okay, let's talk about the fucking episode. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've been recording for like 14 minutes. Let's talk about the episode itself. Uh, So I have to say, and I... Okay, so I actually got a little bit sad when I when I did some googling here, because I I googled um, I googled the the characters that we met in the story, and I have to say, Spyfall is really up there in terms of how we do, uh, how we're doing in in just stories lately in Doctor Who. Spyfall is really up there because the way they did the second episode. The second episode in particular, it was so much better than the first one. And that's not to say the first one was bad. It was actually really good. But the first one had that impact of like, oh shit, the master. This episode takes me to the 19th century, then took me to the 20th century. Simultaneously, while we were having a conflict in the 21st century with Google. Sure. But in the 21st century, we met Charles Babbage and Ada Lovelace. And in the 20th century, we met Noor Inayat Khan. And I, I did say I got a little bit sad while reading about this because Noor Inayat Khan, she died aged 30, executed at a concentration camp. So that sucks. And Ada Lovelace died at 36. Uh, from uterine cancer. So that sucks too. <laughs> uh, Charles Babbage made it to 79. So I guess he made it out. But Jesus Christ. They like they skipped that in, in the episode. They didn't mention it at all. because um, And I like that. I like that they didn't. Because the, the, the point that they make with these characters and, and showing them to us and, and some of the dialogue that they gave us it is to essentially inspire us and inspire hope in the sense that uh, it's like, Adam, you're going to do so many amazing things. You're going to figure things out sooner than everyone else. You don't need my help. You don't need to know these things. You'll figure it out on your own. You're so amazing. And and with Noor, or Noor, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I'm sorry. With Mrs. Khan here, uh, with her, it's like, they start the dark times, but it's going to be a lot better. Don't worry. Like, the fastest never win as long as there are people like you fighting. And I'm just like, that's so good. That's so good. I'm inspired by this dialogue. And then I look at the wiki article and it's like, she got executed at a concentration camp at age 30. I'm like, okay, that must have been like two years after we see her here. <sighs> that feels bad, man. But I do like that the show didn't tell me that because it wanted to inspire me. It wants to inspire its audience. It doesn't want to bum me out. It wants me to feel like, yeah, man, 
we can do this together. We can persist, you know? That is ultimately what a lot of what this show is doing, has been doing for like a little bit. Well, in general, it always does this, right? Doctor Who in general just always does this, uh, this bit of trying to inspire you to do better, uh, trying to inspire humanity in general. But um, I, I, I just got bummed out on my own. <laughs> but that's not because the show told me. That's because I just looked it up. So, I have to say, I love that we go with those two characters. Uh, three, I guess, with Charles, we just showed up for a little bit. But I love that we got those characters in here, because, man, I I feel like Chivnail read some reviews for Series 11, filter out the bad ones, the ones that are full of shit, and listen to what people were saying, and he was like, Okay, let's focus on historical. Let's just focus on historical trauma. Let's do that. Because the, we look at spy film, I don't give a shit about the, 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 the shining uh, white beings that wanted to use human beings as a storage. I don't give a shit about them. I don't remember the name, but I don't care about them. I do love the journey that we have in order to solve the problem, which is the Doctor was Maroon in the 19th century. Then she met Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage. And she was like, oh shit, you guys are awesome. And then she's like, okay, so I'm going to do this bullshit in order to see if I can go back to my time. And then Ada tagged along with her. And then both of us ended up in Nazi Germany in 1943 and met Nur Inayat Khan. And then we, we, we dodge the master again. The master is chasing us through time. That's really fucking cool. It, because it's a battlefield, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a chase as well. It's like we're escaping through different eras. And the master is, is trailing behind us across time itself. That's so fucking cool. I love that shit so much. And like the moment we get here, he immediately pulls over with uh, of a car and he just walks out in a fucking nazi outfit and he's like yeah i'm here where are you doctor i know you're here it's like fuck off like that's so cool and then and then we we managed to dodge now we managed to we not get shot and uh and then we realized that is uh nor in yet khan and um uh, i like that because the doctor is like going through different eras of time and meeting important people through history and it's like oh shit you're that person oh shit you're that person oh my god okay okay we can do this we can do this we have some of the greatest minds here we can we can do some shit here i got a plan and i like that they they were very open-minded about this in a way it feels like they didn't ask as many questions as they should have but i here's the thing here's the thing here's the thing the 13th doctor has 16 charisma like, a fuck ton of charisma. And rolls in that 20s all the time. Like, I feel like the 13th Doctor, and I said this already in Series 11, I feel like the 13th Doctor is the inspiring Doctor. It's the Doctor that just talks you into just being like, okay, let, okay let's go. You know, just like, that is the one. More than any other Doctor. More than any of them that I can think about. Some of them can be more intimidating, Mr. Eyebrows here. Uh, some of them can be can be more emotive. This is the inspiring one. This is the one that just can say whatever the fuck bullshit that she comes up with the moment. And it sounds like, yeah, yeah, girl, let's go. You know, that's what that feels like. Every time she speaks, everything she says, it's like, all right, fine, let's go. She has so high charisma set. Than, uh, than anyone else. So, whenever I'm thinking, maybe I feel like some characters shouldn't have just, like, went along with whatever the fuck just said, just like that, I realize, no, no, actually, yeah, this doctor can do it. This doctor is the one that talks you into doing whatever. She has that high of a charisma. It's, it's so good. Um, so, uh, I like that we had that little crew going on of uh, made of uh, famous historical people that are capable of great things because they are 
They are pioneers in the fields of uh, of maths, engineering, and computing. Computing mostly. I, I looked it up, and Charles Babbage is apparently the guy that built. Um, he was mostly in engineering, while Ada Lovelace was mostly like a programmer. Um, so that's what she was. And nor in yet can she was. She was a wireless operator. She was the first female wireless operator. So she wasn't that much into like she she wasn't that crucial into the into the into the progress, but she was crucial in what she did. You know? Her life still had a lot of meaning. And she was really good at it, apparently. Um so I like that we had that crew. They were great. At the same time though. At the same time though. We had another crew going with Ryan Graham and yes. And who would have thought that the one thing you needed to do in order to have them just just be the fucking best is just remove the doctor from the equation and just have each of them have their own separate adventures. Because while we're while they were on their own, they shine so high. And I liked it so much because I feel like every scene where the doctor is in and they are with the doctor, it feels like the doctor is the one shining and everyone is just like, yeah, okay. Everyone's just like keeping up with the doctor, which makes sense. Doctor's the main character and there's also the doctor, like, come on. But now that the doctor's gone, they have to figure out what to do themselves. And that made it so they have the initiative to whatever they do, act, say, anything is on them. And I like that so much. And I feel... I ho I'm hoping... I'm crossing my fingers... That in this season... All three of them are going to get more initiative... Even when the Doctor is on screen. Which is going to take a little bit away from the Doctor. More so than already, already has happened. Because we have a team instead of a, instead of a duo. But... I want them to be the... I want them to be the ones that are doing shit. And the doctor is like, oh, oh, that's good. You know, I don't necessarily want the doctor to every time be the one that figures things out. And everyone else is keeping up with her and just doing whatever that she's saying. This doesn't happen always. Like, I'm not saying that, that the entirety of series alone was just that. But I feel like it was mostly that. And in this episode, we actually got to see Graham and Ryan and Yes just sitting and talking and, and talking about some dumb bullshit and interacting and um, reminiscing of things and just talking about themselves, talking about the doctor. And then they're just like the whole thing with the spy things, the spy gear, because they were like, I like that they were like, OK, what do we do? We are enemy of the world number one. It's like, it's like the son of drums again. Uh, so it's like, w what are we doing? What do we do? Mr. Google wants us. Um, so then it's like, okay, we got to figure a way in order to take him out. Like, that's it. The doctor wants us, like, he's clearly the bad guy. The doctor wants us to stop him clearly. So even if the doc is not here, we should probably do the one thing that she would have done, which is just take him out. So we're going to do it instead. So then they just device plans and do some shit and like they go like okay we don't have phones we don't have to what do we have and it's like i actually kept some of the spy gear with me and and ryan is like i did too and it's like they start talking about the dumb shit and graham is like i got the fucking laced shoes and i'm like okay and that actually came back that was an actual point in the plot that wasn't just a, a dialogue funny conversation thing it was actually a thing that uh, later on they are getting attacked and Gra and and everyone just goes, Graham, shoot them with your laser shoes or whatever. He's like, I don't know how to use energy and destructions. And he's like, I don't know, stomp your feet or something. It's that's like stomping and start shooting. And they go like, holy shit, okay, aim better. I, I don't know how to do this. I didn't read the instructions. They go like, stop dancing, Graham. It's like, <laughs> and shooting at them while dancing. What? is happening that was so good it was so good and that entire just entire part of the story that we had the doctor wasn't in it it wasn't a confrontation with the main bad guy either until the very end so like what well, until the very what happened to mr google did he just did 
Did he just walk away? He literally did just walk away. Like, we didn't saw that. We didn't saw that. He's still Mr. Google. He has enough resources for for the for to shut up the world for whatever the fuck he said and just be like, no, no, it was a joke though. So, okay, Mr. Google is still out there. I don't remember his fucking name, but the guy who owns Google essentially, who did the most cartoonish evil, evil CEO leader of the world speech that I've ever heard it's just like you let us put our cameras into your homes into every devices you gave us the ability to put microphones in your pockets and we said it would be private and you trusted us he was like that was like the most evil bullshit thing i've ever heard anyone say and i i cannot believe that the audience that was listening to that was just like that's literally what the audience that was listening to him was like. They were just like... They were just, like, paying attention. And I'm just like... Why is none of you rioting, screaming, yelling, insulting, jumping at him and physically assaulting him? Like... <laughs> I, I was having a hard time see, keeping up with, like, how, how, how was anyone so disinterested in what he was saying? You know, and then he did the thing of like sending everyone in the world a message, and it's like humanity is doomed. You have two minutes, and everyone just started laughing. And I'm like, do you not hear everything else that he said? And then he's like, not a joke, by the way. And nobody still care. It was like, come on. Anyway, um, I yeah, I got sidetracked a little bit, but I love Graham, yes, and Ryan in this episode because I. They got to do things on their own. And I love that. I love that so, so much. And I want them... I want more of that, please. I want more of that. I want them to just interact. And I want them to just figure out what to do. And just do it. That's what I want. Uh, and I want them to have fun while doing it. Because, like, that's the thing. It's not like... I enjoy the moments they were just talking to each other. And making jokes and doing stupid shit. I love that so much. Just if you want me to care about a character, just show me, show me them doing stupid shit. Just, just, just bonding, because that that's what makes you feel like these are real people. The moments that they spend, just not just the serious moments, but the moments where they just are goofing off and just doing whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, that that's real. That's that's real people right there. So just show me that, make me care so much more. So. Uh, I like every moment that we had with those three. All right, so now we jumped to... Yeah, let's go back to the Doctor. So we were stranded on the 19th century, and the Master showed up, and he just started killing people, just like, whatever. I I like that fucking Ada Lovelace was just ruthless. I like that, because the Master showed up, and she shot him with the vapor cannon, and then she threw a grenade at him, and the doctor was like, Ada, I do not approve of this. And it's like, fuck you, I don't care. <laughs> so they did that and they escaped to the uh, 20th century Nazi Germany. And I like... I like that the doctor met up with the master and she devised a plan, a really good one. But they, she met with the master and she appointed uh, a meeting using morse code and but the morse code wasn't really morse code it was it was the sound of jumps it was the four heartbeats of a time blower um so she just started sending that and the master was like this fucking bitch okay and then she's like let's meet up by the way were they were they communicating telepathically or was it like a radio thing because they, she was, she had like the headphones or whatever, so like the radio, so maybe it was just like an actual communication. But also, it could have just been, it could have been telepathically. Like I'm not sure because time lords do have some degree of tele telepathy. Uh, it has been shown before, so I don't know if they had that and that was the the way of communicating here. 
uh, long range telepathy, or if it was just a communication, I wasn't sure. Anyway, I don't think it matters very much. They meet up, and I like how the doctor is just like, I don't like what you're wearing, because he's just wearing a Nazi officer fucking outfit. It's like, yeah, fuck off with that with that disguise. Well, I guess. I guess he's still into disguises. I guess that I, I guess that never really changed, did it? <laughs> he's still into disguises. Um, but like I do like that this I do like that so in my head I was thinking the doctor has to skill the master starters because that's like the only way to get to get back to where we are with a time machine. And the master has a time machine, that's why he's chasing you, so just take his. Um so in my head I was thinking that, and the way they eventually got around to that is that the doctor literally just she sent a signal. So then the uh, uh well, Moore was her name, Noor in Ayat Khan, would send um a fake Morse code signal that seems to have been from the Brits to the Master saying that uh, you've been a really good double agent or something like that. So then the Nazis would just intercept that and they would just be like, oh, this piece of shit, he's been lying to us. So then they just went to him and just fuck him up. And I do like how the doctor is just like, how did you trick them to let you in? You don't look like white. <laughs> you don't look like the Aryan master race that they're trying to push. And he's like, ah, simple perception filter. And the doctor's like, yeah, simple enough. Shh. Turn off. Now you're you. So then when the Nazis get that, they just they just fucking get him. They just fucking fucking imprison him. And I like that like two scenes later, he walks in into Graham, Ryan, and Yas, and he's like, I've had the shittiest 77 years of my life or just now. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, that's really good. It's really good because it that is a really good one scene into the next scene, but so much happened in the middle. But we don't have to worry about that. He just told us everything we needed to know. Like, it was so good. It was so good. I, I like that. Um, I like whenever we fucked with time. Because here's the thing about Doctor Who. We don't necessarily fuck with time too much. We just use the time machine thing as a device in order to get a new setting every episode and that's good i do like a new setting every episode and i do like that we don't have limits as to what the setting can be so i like going to the past i like going to the future present everything but we don't necessarily fuck with time enough considering we have a time machine but now we did because it, it, that is, that is a little little scene interaction that is actually fucking with time because it's like the master got trapped as a nazi as a quote-unquote Brit spy by the Nazis in 1943, and then he had to live all the way from there to 2020. And then he just walks in and he's like, I've had a really rough 70 years. Nobody talked to me. <laughs> and it's like, that's really fun. That's really fun because, and that is not even time travel. Because he didn't time travel, but we did. Because we jumped from one period of time to the other, and the same character is just talking about that period of time to us. So, that I like. I like I like the concept of time being used in how we tell a story. Speaking of, uh, I like how they solve the plane. Because at the end of the previous episode, I was like, how are they going to fucking get out of this? How? And I, I thought, yes, I, I, I remember saying, yes, maybe became like a superhuman or whatever, because she went through like the, 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 the thing. And I was like, maybe she's going to be like a superhero and she's going to grab Ryan and Graham and just fly off and she's going to save them. And I'm like, that would be dope. But that didn't happen. What actually happened is that Ryan literally just looked just the floor, and there was a little thing that said, hey, Ryan, Ryan Sinclair, look here, look here. And then he saw a pamphlet drew, drawn by the doctor that just says, hey, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, follow these instructions. And then he 
he plugs the USB to his app, and then it's like, oh, you can control the plane from this. And, uh, like, a, a a monitor turns on on the plane, and it's like, oh, hey, uh, hi, how are you guys doing? Okay, so this is what you got to do in order to survive. And it's like, follow all these instructions, and it's like, I like that so much, because that is time travel. Okay, so I thought for a second that she was wearing her default outfit when she recorded that, but no, she's just wearing the, the suit. So never mind. Um, so she, I like that because when I saw that, I'm like, that's something that she's going to get to do later. That's something that she's totally going to get to do later and we're going to see it. And then it, it, it's going to come full circle because it's, she has a time machine. She can do that whenever she fucking wants. So after all of this is over, she's going to go back in time, record that and solve the problem for them in the past. Which is really a fun is it's, it's always really funny because like the way time works in the show is just like it works for the convenience of the plot every time because the rules of what we can and we can't do are always locked to the convenience of the story that we have right to the convenience of the script because otherwise the doctor can always always just say fuck this, I'm gone, I'm going back to my time machine, I'm going back in time, I'm gonna fix things. She can always do that. She can literally always do that. But then we have moments where it's like, well, I can't because I'm already locked in here. And it's like, are you? Are you really? Like, <laughs> you could you could literally just, like, go back in time, like, a couple hours and just set up whatever bullshit you have set up in order to ensure that two hours from now, you solve the problem immediately. You can always do that. She never does. She always just wings everything in the moment, and sometimes it works out. And it's like, you always have the ability to go back in time, like, a couple hours, and solve it before it happens. So then when it happens, it's immediately solved. And you don't have to necessarily interfere with the, w the things you saw, because what you see isn't necessarily isn't necessarily the absolute truth. So as long as you work around that, then you're good. <laughs> that's that's always how it is, but it is never addressed. Except when it is, which is here. Which is like, how, how, how did it solve the plane? Oh, I have to, yeah. Okay, I'm going to my camera and go back in time and solve it. And it's like, fuck you. <laughs> but I do like whenever it happens. I really do like whenever that happens. So I'm glad that happened. And I'm glad that at the end of the episode, after the problem was solved, it's like, oh, right, I gotta go solve the plane. And then she went and did it with 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 Ada and, and Noor. Both of them were helping the doctor in how to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> they saw her designing and printing the 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 little guy thing that she left for for Ryan on the plane, and they they were looking at her like, what the fuck is that shit? <laughs> you know, that was so good. Okay, all right, that was fantastic, and I like that at the end the the goodbye the farewells that she gives to both of them. I have to assume the doctor knows about their fates, but it's it's not addressed because it's we don't have to. It's kind of mean to do that to the audience, honestly, to sucker punch them like that. So, I like the adventures. Okay, let's talk about the Satcha Master in this episode, because this is the first episode that we have him fully in Satcha Master mode. Because the previous episode was just only like a little bit. But, I, I think I, I had a really accurate first impression of him in the previous episode. Because this episode only cemented what I already thought. And it's the fact that he reminds me a lot of the Johnson Master. He is so childish. So childish. Not necessarily not not always in the in the sense of like, yeah, I got you, I got you, yeah, yeah. He's like super hyped for it. But also in the sense that when the doctor got away, he's like Oh, the fuck is that bitch still alive? And then when he arrives in the 19th century, he's like super upset. He's super pissed. It's like, I'm gonna get you this time. And it's like, wow, my buddy, like, how, why are you this 
man, like we do this every time. You know how this is how this goes, right? It's like, but he's so upset, and I'm just sitting here like, I guess he's the childish type, because like that that's that's not what Mizzy was for sure. But I, I but he was he's very similar to the to the Johnson master in a way, but I think he nails it even harder, and I think he it also works better in in the in the way the show works now. I said it already, this just cements it. I really like him. I really like him as the master. I think he's doing a really good job, and I also like him in this version of the show. I really do. What else is there to talk about? Well, the elephant in the room. <laughs> At the very end, uh, our boy, Sacha, Master O, talks to us. Well, the doctor visits Gallifrey and sees that Gallifrey's fucked and gone and dead. So then she's like, all right, then. What are we doing? Then... A hologram projects into TARDIS because it activates when she's in Gallifrey. And the master's there, and he's telling her, Okay, so, as you can see, it is destroyed. Also, when I said somebody destroyed it, clearly I meant me. Clearly I meant that I destroyed it, which is what I thought. But then they didn't dwell on, they, they didn't go farther into that, so I was like, oh, maybe not. But then they came back around, and I'm like, okay, yeah, it was him. So, but what he said is that he didn't destroy Gallifrey just out of whim. He destroyed Gallifrey because of what he discovered, because of what he, we, what he found out. And he said that uh, they lied to us, they lied to us about you about me about us as a species all of us the founding fathers for Gallifrey lied to us that was that's what he said and uh, whatever he discovered made him so mad that he just he just killed everyone he just destroyed the whole planet because he was so upset with the revelation that he must have had that he was like fuck this shit you're dead all of it is dead i don't care anymore not that he cared that much to begin with but given a part of it can just be because he's super childish with this face so he's just like as soon as something doesn't go his way which would include some a revelation of some kind he just goes like fuck off and just starts guns blazing the whole plane just shot down the entire building that's what he did. So maybe it was just his personality more than anything. But it could have been the fact that he that there is a really, 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 really big revelation that they're setting up with the timeless child. It was brought back. I, I mentioned it at the very beginning of the episode I, of the video. I said they had a setup in series 11 and that they didn't go into it. But now it's coming back. Um, so it was a setup for the season. Maybe, uh, maybe it is revealed in this season. It feels like it is being given enough importance that it will be, but it might not be. It, maybe we'll we'll figure it out next season because I'm I'm pretty sure we get another Jody season. I'm pretty sure that uh, I think I read somewhere that um that she was contracted for three seasons at least. Um, that could be wrong though because that was a while ago. And, but I'm just assuming three seasons because everyone gets three seasons, really. So, I, uh, maybe, maybe it's a setup for that. Maybe we'll be resolved here in this season. Regardless, there's a big revelation coming. Something that made the Master just blow up the entire planet because it was so big. So... That paired with what he said of, like, everything you think you know is a lie, everything they ever told us is a lie, it's like... <sighs> I see a couple of... a couple of futures that we might have. Um, and, like, I'm thinking about it, and it's like, okay, something that could happen is... 
we get a revelation and it's not as big of a deal as is it is being built up to be. It is just some kind of revelation that the audience goes like, oh, okay. But it was given way more importance and build up than it deserved, I feel like. Especially now that the master is just like, I killed them all because they they lied to me and it, it was terrible, whatever. Then it could be a revelation that it could be really cool. It could be really cool. And uh, it's going to be a fun, fun, uh, fun main storyline that we're going to follow. Or it could be a revelation that is so fuck you big out of nowhere that everyone is just going to be like, fuck the show. It, it could be it could be any of the three. I mean, there are already people that say fuck the show, but like I think that um, I think that whatever excuse they're gonna get, they're gonna, just gonna take it. But like, will it? I'm not sure what will, it will be. I'm expecting it to be cool, or or it's just gonna be built built up more than it deserved to be. Like I'm bracing myself for disappointment here. Actually, like I'm bracing myself for it to not be. As cool as some as as any finales we've had besides for Chains Eleven could be, uh, it might not be that great, but you know, um, could be cool. We don't know, but uh, I, I just keep thinking like, what could we do that it would be like such a big revelation that the master would get so fucking pissed and just kill everyone? I mean, it's just a master, so in that case, it's like it's not that big of a leap. But the line of everything you think you know is a lie, that's the one. Because it's like, the, everything that I ever known is a lie. Everything that he ever knows is a lie. So it's like, what is, what, what is, specifically? What is the thing? So, like, I'm trying to come up with something. Like, because, like, it sounds like it, would, it could be something so fuck you stupid that it would be something like, Reality is a simulation and nothing is real. So fuck it, I'm just gonna kill everyone. I don't care anymore. We already did that with extremists, given it was only for a story, but I I, I also that is so stupid that I don't think they could ever do that. And I it would be a it would be a difficult task to do it well. But like what could it be that it, it would be so fuck you? I don't know. Like, I literally don't know. Because he has to change some fundamental understanding that they must have had of of reality or themselves. He did some... He did say something else, didn't he? Give me a second. Turn off subtitles again. The whole existence of our species... Built on the lie of the timeless child. The fuck does that? And then the doctor has like this. Yeah, we see in episode two when it's like child, child, child. And then, and I'm analyzing this frame by frame. Fuck you, I'm doing it. You can't stop me. But after that, we get a, a small scene. Well, well, it just says child, child, child. And. And it's a scene that it's like... How many frames long was that? It was like a full second. So yes. I'm looking at it like from frame by frame. At least I think it's frame by frame. And it, it seems to be a child wearing yellow robes in some kind of ancient building. And something approaches the child. Child looks, looks like a little girl. I think it's a girl. She has dark skin, I think. Is it a girl? I'm looking more of a close up now. I think it is. I think it is. And then we, and then the camera shifts upwards into, and we see this 
spikes of what the the building is, which is like a it's made of stone, it seems like, and then there's some there's a purple shining sky. And then that's it. That's all we get to see. Okay, that is ominous enough that they were like, yeah, people are gonna frame by frame this and try to piece this together, and I'm like, yeah, okay, there's nothing I can do about that. I, I can just describe what I see, and there's nothing else I can pierce together from that. He says, it's buried deep in all of our memories. He was like, did you see it? It's buried deep in all of our memories. In our identity. He looks really torn about it. So, okay, okay, okay. It is not a fundamental truth of reality. It is a fundamental truth about themselves. I think. Okay. By the way, by the things that he says and the way he's, he's acting, makes me feel that it is a fundamental truth about themselves. The Time Lords as a whole, maybe as a species, um, built on the lie of the Timeless Child. Is the timeless child a lie, or is it the truth? <sighs> Dude, I have no idea what's happening anymore. Um, God, like, here's the thing, though. I could say some bullshit for, like, another ten minutes. None of it is gonna ever come true. None of it is gonna make any sense to anyone that is not inside of my brain. So I think that Best thing we can do is just say, I don't know. <laughs> I The one thing I can say, and I, I can assume at least, is that it is a truth about the Time Lords. Maybe the Gallifreyans. Um, maybe maybe encoded into their, their, their genes, their evolution. Something like that. Or, or the planet of Gallifrey itself. Some truth about that. And, yeah, it is more about that, about their origin as a species, than it is about a, a, a truth that affects the entire universe, such as reality is a simulation, you know? So it is more personal in the sense that it is about their species, I think. And it was just something that made me so mad that he just, he just killed everyone. Okay, that's all I can say. I have no idea about anything else. So I, I think I think that's it. I think I think I think that's it for speculation about that until we get further information and then maybe we can try to pierce things together. But for the time being, I got nothing. I just know the direction we're going. I cannot solve the mystery, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna say, be on my pay grade. I'm just gonna walk away. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do so yeah um boy I really like that episode I really like that episode I like jumping to several points of history in the past and we get to meet historical people and and it is not only one period of time but several and there is a chase happening to several points in time the master is there he's fucking great he's nailing it Ryan and Graham and yes, they're all doing their own stuff and they're really good at it. They're having really fun moments and conversations and scenes with the fucking laser shoes and whatever. And it's just great. Everything about this episode was just fantastic. It's better than the first one. And the first one was already fucking fire. So this one is just even better. Serious 12, starting strong. I'm loving it. Hope I hope it gives up the entire way. Well, maybe, maybe it won't be. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Magician's Apprentice, which is familiar. Not for anything other than its structure, because it's like, it's like, it's a two-parter. We bring back a nemesis from, that is a staple in the franchise. We bring that back. We do a two-parter. It's a premiere. We're doing the whole thing again, uh, new again. It feels fresh. It feels nice. And in, it reminds me because in series 8, I watched series 8 and I was like, yeah, not the best season. It's pretty good though. Capaldi can do a lot. And I, and I'm just like, well, series 8, like, that's not that great though, but I'm I'm hopeful for series 9. And then series 9 kicks off with Magician's Apprentice of Witcher Familiar and I'm like, I'm in, bro. I'm fucking in. 
this is the feeling I'm getting right now again with Spyfall. It's just like Series 11, not the best season. I don't think it was bad. It was just wasn't that fantastic. But it's like, okay, it's a new Doctor. We're, we're figuring things out. We're seeing what we're going to do. Series 12 kicks in. Two-parter right away. We bring back an, a nemesis. We bring back the Master. We do a ton of cool shit that I'm a big fan of. And then we close off on, on, on a nice, well, not a nice note, but like a note. <laughs> and I'm just like, I want more. I'm excited for this season now. Is this season going to be all two parts here? I don't think it will be because the length of the episodes I think is longer. And we only have 10. But but like, I'm excited for Series 12, man. I'm, I really am. This, this season's going to be hot fire, I can tell. Okay, so, all right. Uh, I, I, I think we're done. I think we're done with uh, Doctor Who Series 12 episode 2. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in for this episode of a Doctor Who reaction. If you'd like to see the next one, it's already up on Patreon. As well as full link. Maybe it's not. Don't quote me on that. Check first because I've been having issues with my SP. Never mind that. Okay, see you next time. Bye. I'm running out of time. 20 seconds. Bye.